Thank you so much for joining us for our Christmas Eve service. I'm so happy that you are here with us. We've got an amazing service lined up for you today. It's including worship. We're going to have an amazing message from our Bible teachers, Mike and Nate Mead. And then at the end, we're going to close out with our candle lighting service, uh, which reminds me, you need to make sure that you have a candle somewhere near you so that when we get to the end of the service, you can light that candle with us. I also want to take a quick minute to just say thank you so much for your generosity on the screen right now. Um, are some ways to give to help you partner with us in our mission of inspiring people to say yes to God. We thank you so much for your generosity, and I'm so excited for the Christmas Eve service that we have today. Is that it? Yeah, we're Sweet. good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Who is he? He who, before doing any actions, embodies God. This baby, wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger, chosen to save the world? At first look, it is hard to believe that this kin of Mary has been chosen to save our very lives. The embodied deity of God, now with us. This child, who is he? He is peace. peace. Our Prince of Peace on earth, in our souls. This is not a temporary peace. We can have continual peace in Him. In all anxiety, sadness, and uncertainty, He blesses us with an everlasting peace and joy. As we welcome our King of Glory, from Mary's song of praises, to the angels rejoicing, Simeon sing, this day, he has come. We can celebrate that He is here now. This joy stems from hope. As our waiting has come to pass, hope fulfilled through Jesus, hope for all the earth, hope that we can share. We eagerly anticipate what He will do next. For now, we sit in His love. For His love has never failed us. He loves us so much that He gave us His child, wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. This is mercy in its fullness, the dawn of redeeming grace. And now that hope, hope peace, joy, and love is incarnated in one body, one soul. How glorious is it that this is only the beginning, that those same attributes are here with us today because now i 
Well, Merry Christmas. I'm glad that you're here, and whether you're watching online or here in this room with us, just want to extend a warm welcome to you, your friends, your family, whoever you may be with this evening. And I'm honored that you would want to spend some of your Christmas with us here today. You know, we are a church who love God and love people. We are committed to inspiring others to say yes to God in all areas of their life. You know, we have ministry and care about children in our community, teenagers, adults, and have ministry that extends to all of them. We're deeply committed to not only our community outside of these walls, but our global community. We're a church who uh, not only wants to see the gospel of Jesus Christ at the center of the church, but go far beyond the walls of the church here. And so I I just want to ask you to consider investing into your spiritual life as we head into this new year and uh, making North Church a part of your family. And with that being said, this coming Sunday, the day after Christmas on December 26th, we will have no in-person services, but we'll have a devotional online, um, a Christmas devotional. I want to invite you to watch that and be a part of it. Uh, You can go to northchurch.net and come be a part of our online service. And then the following Sunday on January 2nd, we will be back in person and online as well. And we have cookies, coffee. We got hot chocolate for you. And don't forget to grab a family uh, photo on your way out before you go. So anyways, I'm just glad that you are here. So we're gonna continue to sing together. Would you stand uh, together as we continue to sing? Son of David, 
Yeah. 
God, we are so thankful to be here tonight, that we set this time aside to worship you and to thank you for coming to this earth, initiating the relationship with us, loving us, forgiving us, redeeming us. And so we honor you, the Christ child this morning or this evening. Blessed be your name. Lord, fill our hearts with your love and your peace. Fill our hearts, God, with all that we need in Jesus' name. Amen. Feel free to have a seat. So excited uh, to be here and to be celebrating Christmas Eve of Eve, I guess Christmas, Adam, with you. And, uh, you know, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while now, and it's so good to be able to um, gather together and celebrate this newborn king together. I mean, what a privilege that is to be, to be with each other. I never want to take that for granted. Uh, we have been celebrating Advent. This uh, little arrangement over here, the Ad Advent wreath, is really a reminder of the various things that Jesus brings to us in our broken condition, that he brings to us uh, so many things. And it's been an uh, anticipatory time of just expecting and anticipating and hoping. And I love that. I love, uh, I love aspects of the weight that goes behind Christmas. And maybe you know what I mean with that. Because it's not all fun, right? Especially not that fun if you're a kid because waiting is tough. Waiting for school break to happen and then waiting for Christmas Eve to happen and then waiting and wondering and hoping that you get that gift that you asked for and that it's on the sled and it's not stuck somewhere in the Mediterranean on a freighter. Kind of reminds me of Brian, you know, the kid who was getting tired of waiting and wondering whether his parents were going to get what he wanted, and he kept bugging his parents over and over and over for an Apple Watch. Finally, he mentioned it so many times that it, his dad was getting frustrated and looked at him and said, look, Brian, you need to quit bugging us about this because if you say anything about it one more time, you're not getting it. Well, until last night. They were eating dinner, and a mom and dad asked Brian to pray over the meal. He said, I'd love to, but before I do, can I just share this memory verse that I have? And they said, sure. And he said, well, it's found in Mark 13, 37. I say unto you what I have already told you before, watch. <laughs> Smart kid. How about you? What are you waiting on? What are you hoping for? What is it that you're expecting? 
Um, and we all wait for things. We're all in a place, probably some of you may be waiting on that next big deal to happen, kind of the turn of the year. Some of you may be waiting on a doctor's report to come back, and that could be even concerning to you. Uh, it may be waiting on that guy to finally pop the question. Uh, there's so many ways that we can wait in anticipation. And I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on God in different areas of my own life. I'm waiting for some clarity about uh, future stuff. I'm waiting on God to do something powerful in our community. Um, I'm waiting on him to bring revival, not only out there, but right here in my own heart. Waiting on God and waiting on our, to see our country be unified and waiting on this pandemic to be done. I mean, there's so many things, right, that we are waiting on and expecting and hoping and anticipating. And in that, there's frustration and there's pain can you imagine um, can you imagine waiting collectively together for something not just for you know a few years but for not even just decades but for centuries centuries together when you look at the the life of the children of God Israel they had been waiting and watching and wondering for hundreds of years prior to Jesus coming and people were waiting year after year, decade after decade, century after century, for God to send the promised Messiah. And you see, in the days of Jesus, Rome was in charge. Rome had spread out and conquered much of the world, and they were protecting Palestine, but it was at a cost, the price of subjugation and control. And, and, and Israel was so desiring to get that yoke and that burden of control off of their back. They were desperate for a change in the government. And they were watching and praying and waiting for this long-awaited and expected Messiah. And in their mind, Messiah would be strong. He would be, he would be not only strong politically, but militarily. And that he would come and crush the oppressors. He would restore them to world prominence and he would lead them into a place of abundance. God had given dozens and dozens of prophecies over hundreds of years, and prophecy is like a clue from God about the future. And he started telling Israel, God did, what, what, what he was going to do long before it ever happened. God spoke through the prophet Isaiah about 700 years before the coming of Christ, and he said, Look, this is something I'm going to do. He said in Isaiah 7, 14, All right then, the Lord himself will choose the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. Jesus would be born miraculously through the womb of a virgin. And he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. Then God spoke through the prophet Micah. And he told us where it would happen. He said, but you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, are only a small village in Judah. Yet a ruler of Israel will come from you, who's one whose origins are from the distant past. Another clue that this coming Messiah would be born in this obscure little place called Bethlehem. The people knew that the Messiah would come and be born in the lineage of David, born as a baby, coming through the womb of a virgin, a miracle birth. And Israel knew that God would enter this world in a way and in a time where people least expected it. And he would bring change. They had these high expectations and they were waiting and they were waiting, and they were waiting for this Messiah, for this king that would instantly take away all of their suffering and ease their pain and crush the oppressors and restore world dominance. So many people celebrate Christmas today, kind of hoping for the same thing. Year after year, missing the whole reason for Christmas, looking in the same way that ancient Israel was looking for God to take away their problems, a God who would make their life easier, who would take away their stress, who would crush the opposition, who would quickly make their life better. But God's kingdom is not a kingdom of this world. 
God does something different than anyone would have ever expected. Because his kingdom is not based on pride and self-promotion and coercion. He will never make you love him. He will never make you follow him. He will never make you worship. You and I are invited to come in humility, recognizing our need for our creator, that we can come in all of our brokenness just as we are, and we can kneel and we can worship like the wise men did. That we can honor him and acknowledge his lordship like the shepherds did. That it's not only the day of Christmas that we celebrate, it's a whole new day. A new kingdom with a new king and a new beginning. Christmas is all about Jesus. It's all about who he is and what he's done for us and what he wants to continue to do for us. The prophet Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 prophesied this. He said, for us, a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, let's talk about that for a moment. Jesus, the Wonderful Counselor, this is his name, this is his character, this is part of who he is and why he came. So many people seeking help today, right? seeking professional counseling. I mean, there's so much pain in our world, brokenness, there's anxiety and fear and abuses and all kinds of things that people seek that, that professional help. I've sought it myself. I'm thankful for the things that professional counselors bring to bring comfort and help. But honestly, some of the most profound breakthroughs in my own emotional life have happened through the Spirit of God wonderful counselor Jesus what he can do in a moment is absolutely amazing there have been times when I felt so alone so crushed by the weight of this life and I don't know if you've noticed but sometimes you make your phone call to set up an appointment with a human counselor and they're really busy right now and it's like they're not always available and you might wait a month or two I have good news for you There's a wonderful counselor who's available 24-7 to you, and his name is Jesus. And he's there, and we just need to reach out to him. That he's that, that spirit that comes into us and leads us and guides us and is the paraclete, which means the one who comes alongside of us. And he gives us hope. He gives us some answers, and he gives us some freedom, and he gives us some things that we would have no way to find or get any other way. Jesus is also a mighty God. The word mighty God in Isaiah 9 verse 6 means the God hero. I love that. Nothing can get in the way of his purposes or his plan in this world or in your life. God is full of mercy, but he's also full of might. He's powerful. Where is it that you need God's power in your life tonight? I mean, where is it, what changes would you like to see happen in you that you can't make on your own? Our problem is we believe that we're in control. You know, if it's to be, it's up to me. We work so hard in our own strength. And as long as you do, God will allow you to do that. He'll let you do that, but it will become exhausting at some point. And it's at that point where we surrender to God and where we realize that, God, I need your mighty power. I need the God hero in my life to move this mountain, to heal this disease, to make provision, to mend a broken relationship. See, God brought his son into this world through a virgin. That is a miracle. If God can do that, he can handle your problem. Where is it that you need to call out on the God hero in your life? Can I just say that he is powerful and he can do and will do more than you can ask, think, or imagine. Just trust him. Jesus, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father. And that means the one who holds eternity in his hands. Jesus, born as a human being on Christmas morning. But 
He was already around way before that, before the beginning of time. Colossians chapter 1, verse 17 tells us that He, Jesus, is before all things, and in Him all things consist. See, Jesus was part of creation. Jesus is God, and He's eternal. God's government, His kingdom, will last forever. And that means that the things that He does in you, that spirit man or woman, that person, the inside of who you are, that will be eternal. And God's work in you is an eternal work. And He's called us to an eternal home called heaven. He is from everlasting to everlasting. And in Christ, we have the promise of eternal life. Then lastly, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. I mean, we need peace in our world. I, I have to like stay off of the news and social media and stuff. It just gets depressing. You read thing after thing after thing that's happening. And it just, I man, we just need peace, peace of mind. Peace in our relationships. Peace from the stress. Peace is a, something that money cannot buy. A Christmas gift. And it started by a baby breaking into our messed up world and becoming a great light. The prophet said that he would become the prince of peace. And we think, no, I'll have peace when I get my questions answered, when I get my ducks in a row, when I get this problem solved. That's when I'll have peace. The problem is, is that you solve one problem and the next one's right around the corner. The truth of the matter is that peace is not going to come because we get all the answers. It's going to come because we trust Jesus in our lives, the Prince of Peace. Not surrendering to the circumstances, but surrendering to God. When you give the situation to God, peace is a result of God being responsible for the outcome. God is in control. Therefore, I don't have to be. Mary, the mother of Jesus, think of her. She would have to trust God with all the unknowns of her life. Anticipation. I mean, that's not always warm and fuzzy. It's not always fun. Ask any mom who's expecting, going to have a baby. I mean, there's this mixture of wonder and wondering. Joy and concern. Ups and downs. In our uh, community group, which is a small group that I belong to, a part of some friendships here in our church, we had three young expecting moms uh, over the course of the last 10 months. And it uh, has been a journey just as a group and as friends just to walk through that and watch them kind of deal with the ups and the downs and the hopes and the ex expectations and the anticipation and the difficulties that has gone with that. I cannot imagine how exhausting it would be to just get asked the same questions over and over again. You know, like, when do you do? You know, like, is it a boy or a girl? How are you feeling? Are you sick? Are you vomiting? Wow, you're big. <laughs> when do you do? When do you do again? How long has it been? Man, you are ready to pop. I can just imagine how frustrating that would be. We were at, uh, at, a, at a small group, and... All the moms were sitting around, and there's a little girl there who's three years old, and she was going around just marveling at, the, at these expectant moms and looking at each one of their bellies and just going, oh, is that your baby? And they're like, yep, that's my baby. And then she would go to the next mom, and she would go, oh, is that your baby? She'd go, yeah, that's my baby. And she'd go to the third mom and say, is that your baby? Yep, that's my baby. And then she turned to her husband, who had put on a couple pounds, I think, during COVID, and said, is that your baby? <laughs> it was an awkward moment. I love kids, though. I love it. I think, I think we've all maybe uh, put on a baby or two uh, during, during this crazy time. Mary had a long wait during her pregnancy. I mean, 10 months, I think, felt like 10 years. The greatest gift that was ready to be given to humankind was inside her womb, and her life was stressful. It was complicated. It was painful. Think about it, just going to the market and enduring the dirty looks, being ostracized from your community of friends, 
And then the Roman government forcing this long trek to Bethlehem. God was working through it all, including her pain, including her suffering. That God was on the verge of good news breaking into this world. And she was willing to endure the cost because of her love for God. Because God was coming in the form of this tiny human, a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, and the prince of peace. A savior would be born for her and for you, and for me, and for all of the world. Let's listen one more time to the story in Luke 2, telling of that first Christmas Eve. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For under you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. is 
He is born. Jesus is born. You know, this is more than just a cute story that we might tell, but it's life changing, it's world changing, and it's incredibly meaningful for you and for I. That Jesus was born to bring us hope, peace, love, and joy. It is hope for all people that mankind might experience the peace that comes from him, that we might experience joy and ultimately the love of God. And while this is all true, ultimately Jesus was born to save. Save the world from its brokenness, from its hurt and its pain, to save the world from the very people who turned their back on him, that Jesus was born to save. And this morning, or this this evening, we looked at and heard about the various prophecies and different ones concerning the birth of Christ and who Jesus is and who he will be. But you know, one of those prophecies that we didn't look at was a prophecy about not only what Jesus will accomplish, but what he will have to endure. And so the prophet Isaiah, hundreds of years prior to Jesus' birth, wrote these words concerning the Savior that would come. He said that Jesus, he would be pierced for our transgressions. He would be crushed for our iniquities. And that the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we would be healed this was the person of Jesus the baby that was born would fulfill this prophecy and that one day he would suffer on our behalf and that Jesus was born knowing that he would be sinless blameless and spotless Yet in spite of all of that, that he would still endure suffering for you and for me. And that he would be pierced for our transgressions. That he would be crushed for our iniquities. And that the punishment that brought us peace, which was his death on the cross and resurrection, what brought us peace was placed upon him. But because God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever might believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That Jesus was born and through that he brought and brings you peace today. That Jesus was born and brings you hope today. 
that Jesus was born and brings you joy today. And that Jesus was born and brings with you God's love today. That Jesus was born to save. And so at this time, if you have never placed your hope, trust, and faith in the God of all creation, who sent his son Jesus to be born in a manger, to live a sinless life, and to ultimately die on a cross to take on our punishment and place it on himself, so that when you place your faith in him, you would be seen from God as spotless and sinless. If you've never placed your hope and faith and trust in him, I want to invite you to do that with me tonight. So as we pray, would you just pray along with me? And if that's you and you want to receive the gift of Christmas in Jesus today, just pray along with me. Sound good? God, we just come before you. And I just pray and ask for forgiveness of where I've messed up. And I pray that you would come into my life that you would fill me with your peace, your love, your joy, and the hope found in you. That you'd make me new and make me clean. I wanna follow you, Jesus, all the days of my life, that you would be the Lord and Savior of my soul. And pray this in your precious name, amen, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I wanna encourage you to tell someone If you've prayed that prayer and you're watching online, maybe share in the chat or share with the host online that you prayed that prayer tonight. And I'm honored uh, that you'd be here and that you've received the gift of Christmas. So this time we're gonna have our candle lighting. Now what these candles represent, these candles represent that hope, peace, love, joy that is inside of us, that this is the light shining in the darkness that this is the light of the world, the hope of all nations. And each little light represents that flame flickering inside you and me that we've received the gift of Christmas, who is Jesus, that we are a reflection of who God is. And so these little flames, we're gonna light them now. And these little flames represent so much more than just a mere candle that has been lit, but represents Christ, the birth of Christ inside each and every one of us. And that light shines bright in the darkest of places. So we're going to light these and then we're going to sing together. So as they light those, just encourage you to, if you have the lit candle, keep it up, have the unlit come to the lit, because if you tip it, you'll spill the wax on the person right next to you, all right? So we're going to light those and sing Silent Night together.
Well, may God give you the peace that only comes from heaven. May his hope found in him fill your life this season. And the joy that comes through knowing Jesus fill your homes and your family. And the love of God rest upon you and fill your life. You guys ready? Careful. For the people in front of you, let's blow it out. Well, Merry Christmas. I'm so glad that you all decided to come here tonight. Uh, don't forget to grab a photo of your family on the way out. Um, it is just our gift to you, uh, a, a wonderful professional photo for you to have. There's still cookies and uh, coffee, uh, other stuff out there. Be sure to turn right on your way out. It's the safest way to exit our lot. Be safe. Have a Merry Christmas. We love you. God bless.